Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your reading. So um, when I was meditating on this month's reading for you, I feel like there is a huge need for you to communicate, to um, like share, share information, share knowledge, share what you know, share your things with other people. So um, I'm seeing like there's this electrical current, okay? So it, it seems like something is bubbling up to the surface. You have a lot of exciting things, a lot of exciting news, a lot of things that you're planning for in your environment. So I see a lot of conversations and a lot of the energies are just very, very buoyant and very communicative and very, very robust. The first image that I saw was, um, I see like the Winnie the Pooh bear. And for those of you who are not familiar with Winnie the Pooh, who might be watching this, it's basically a cartoon based on a stuffed animal, the, the Pooh bear, which is a stuffed teddy bear that came to life, okay? So the, the cartoon is basically about his adventures in this make-believe um, landscape. Um, what he's doing is um, he's holding a red balloon and he's going around with this it's a helium balloon so it's floating and he's holding on to the string and he's walking around showing all of his friends all of the creatures in this make-believe kingdom he's showing them his balloon and he's like you know it's his pride and joy he's basically really really happy that he's got this one thing so you see him kind of bouncing around you know really buoyant very happy very optimistic with his red balloon and so immediately when I saw that, I was just like, I feel like you have discovered something or you have been given something or you have stumbled upon something and you want to share the knowledge of it with other, which is actually very appropriate for an air sign and especially for an Aquarius. You like to relay information. You like to share new things. You like to talk about, you know, like the, the latest discovery, the latest debate. So I feel like there is a definitely a more social uh, aspect of you coming out in the month of April where you are you know wanting to connect more with other people and especially you you have a lot of information a lot of new things possibly new uh, occurrences in your own life that you want to share with other people okay so that's the first image the second image is quite interesting I see this little boy he's at the museum so this is more of a technologically uh, advanced museum it's um, it's it has a lot of uh, gadgets and it seems like in a futuristic time frame because I don't really recognize a lot of the things that are in this museum it's just a lot of weird gadgets a lot of weird like robots and stuff so anyways the boy he's dressed in a more realistic uh, or I'm sorry futuristic uh, type of way as well wearing a lot of silver and the the clothing itself it has a lot of angles and it's very streamlined okay so he's um hovering over this sphere it's like a glass sphere and the inside has electrical currents running through it so you might have seen these things at the museum and it's very responsive to touch so he puts his hand on the sphere and the electrical current runs towards his hand so you're dealing with a situation i feel or you're dealing with um you could be the sphere or you could be the boy but what i feel is the slightest touch can really trigger okay is what i'm sensing because um electrical current is like you know it's it's ruled by uranus and it that's basically your planetary ruler and what it, i'm seeing is there's a lot of electrical current contained in this spherical orbit and from the outsider's perspective, as soon as they place their hands there, the electrical charge zooms towards, you know, the, the hand, okay? So I feel like it's some type of a heat sensor. And either way, it is very, you're very, very responsive to touch. You're very responsive to attention. And you're very, very responsive to this whole concept about if somebody approaches you, you will reciprocate. If somebody, you know, um, comes into your orbit, you're going to allow them in. If somebody makes an effort to kind of reach out, because I, I feel like, you know, the whole concept about touch, it's all about reaching out. You will reciprocate and you will, you know, um, go forth and reach out as well. So this energy is really, really beautiful because it is very different from the energy that I picked up for... Um, 
last month, I believe, when I mentioned that, you know, uh, you're kind of like in your ivory tower doing your own thing and people are coaxing you out of your ivory tower to come join the community of people. And you're just like, no, 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 it's okay. I, I'm, I'm happy where I am right now. And then in the mid month where you're like that crab, you're elusive, you're mysterious. Everybody wants a piece of you. They're trying to corner you or they're trying to possess you. And I feel like against, you know, against all of that you want to just you know retreat back to your lair so i see an emergence a big emergence for this um i'm going to use this card for this month where you are definitely making more effort to step out of your comfort zone and to connect to the community of people and potentially um make yourself available to other people okay so we have three cards all right, so seven more. So what do the Aquarius people need to know for this month of April? And uh, whenever I see the element of... Um, whenever I see thunder, lightning, or even, you know, electricity, I feel like this is the month where there's new connections to be made. And I don't feel it's just, you know, love connections or friendship connections. I feel like it has a lot more to do with making connections in the mental realm, okay? Things clicking, that light bulb is starting to go off. You're able to really understand something and I feel like you're really able to recognize things, make sense of things, um, problem solve, being able to resolve or have like a, a really true innate flashes of genius and flashes of like intuition kicking in. Uh, so your rational mind, and I also feel like your intuitive mind are both triggered in a situation and it's allowing you to make sense of a very complex situation. So I definitely feel there's a lot of awareness, awakening, and just, you know, really good things coming into the picture for the month of April. Uh, once again, we have a ton of people that are already showing up in the cards, okay? Um, let me see here. I'm just kind of thinking that this energy reminds me a little bit of the Sagittarius reading. So if you're dealing with a Sagittarius, you might want to watch that. If you have planetary placement, especially your uh, your moon sign in Sagittarius, you might want to watch that as well. Okay, so the energy is really good, okay? And uh, let me talk about the, the first thing that came out because I feel like this might be a little bit of a sore spot for many of you. First of all, we have here the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is a situation where we feel a little bit like stabbed in the back, okay? And there is kind of a, a big connection here. So when a card falls out at the beginning of the spread, it usually indicates a situation that you have already uncovered, that has already been, um, it, it has already happened, you're already made aware of it. And so this is an ending of some sort, okay? An ending to a situation where you felt like defeated, where you felt, I feel like for many of you, recovering from illnesses as well, especially surgeries, dealing with some type of an emotional pain. And I feel for many of you, this can be in relation to siblings, in relation to some type of a childhood hurt or trauma, a situation where you had some uh, emotional hangups as a child some some things that happen to you and you kind of carry that chip on your shoulder and i feel like the month of march during that entire you know uncomfortable mercury retrograde period i feel for many of you a lot of secrets came to light and the secrets um you guys are really intuitive so i feel like whatever you were sensing all along it came to light and it, it you were getting a lot of confirmation that your um, intuition was not messing with you that whatever you were feeling whatever you were thinking whatever your hunches were they were all correct okay so the information has been revealed and you have 
kind of moved away from it and you have figured out that, you know, I really need to trust my intuition. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, this is a card about childhood. This is a card about all the times in the past that somebody has hurt us. And so even though we have moved away from it, we still carry the abandonment issues, the trust issues, the emotional baggage associated with all the past hurts that we haven't really laid to rest, that we haven't really found closure on. So in a way, I feel like there might have been a situation here where you're dealing with somebody and in the process of dealing with them, if they did something wrong to you, you get really, really upset and you're not only thinking about what this person did wrong you're thinking about all the past situations where the 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 energy was very very familiar where the the patterns keep recurring where you know like the the, the way that they treated you or the things they said to you or whatever the situation was it harkens back to a previous time where you were put in a similar situation so it's it's almost like that mercury retrograde period thank god is over it ended on March I believe March 23rd okay um, it needed to happen so that we can really take the emotional stock of where we've been what our emotional hang-ups are so that we can kind of leave it in the past and not bring it forward to uh, to our future because you start you're starting to realize that there were things that happened years ago that you might not have completely gotten over and so you definitely are at a point where you're looking for brand new things. You're, you're starting a new chapter in your life and you want to turn the page into like that, that blank new page so that you can rewrite or you can continue to write or, or advance into your future. But you haven't been able to do that because of this sheer amount of emotional baggage, trust issues, um, abandonment issues times where you thought you were less than because you know that was the environment that you might have grown up in so i definitely feel there was a situation here that you've um, come to the realization that this is a, a soulmate connection here okay this is like two people who are very innocently passionately um fell in love with each other and i feel like you know the the emotions the love was definitely there but when the two people came in together in their naivety they thought that everything was going to be a bed of roses okay so this is like puppy love this is like very in strong a uh, very strong um mutual reception like mutual feelings that two people have together and as long as they're together everything is going to be okay however there wasn't planning you know it's, it's like two kids like uh, at recess they hold hands and they're smiling the whole day and they don't really need to worry about the, the future because back then the future was like unknown and, and then the situation itself it wasn't complicated but then now I feel like the reality has hit or has kind of like broken open over this relationship and there are a lot of things to consider and I feel this empress energy is your energy you have big goals you have big plans this is somebody who's very independent okay like um she self-possessed she's self-possessed and you can be male or female watching this this is the energy of someone who's very very attractive who takes really good care of themselves they have very high standards and they have like a, a really strong moral upbringing they know right from wrong and they don't do things to hurt other people or they don't stray from their moral path so this is your energy you want to create you want to build a future for yourself you're possibly at the very peak of your career as well you're generating money you're taking care of yourself you're self-sufficient some of you could be like a single mom or a single dad and you're in this state of mind where you take care of everything that's on the table you take care of the kids you take care of your business you keep the house clean you can take care of yourself and you are also a major player in your work environment so i feel like you know the world has really it's like you're you're out to conquer the world and i feel because your energy is so highly elevated 
you're not very tolerant of people who are still trying to find themselves. You're not to- This is somebody who's so self-sufficient that when life deals them a blow, they pick themselves up and dust themselves off and try again. They don't let life get to them. And I feel like in a way, it's sort of like the, the typical Aquarius person because a lot of the times you don't blame your circumstances, okay? You're, whenever things happen, okay, so they, they happen to everyone. Whenever things happen to you, I feel like one of your coping mechanism is um, pick yourself up off your own bootstraps and start over. And so with Aquarius people, if someone really, really hurt you, you don't give them a second chance. You don't give them the time of day you cut them out and you move on with your life. Even though it hurts, you bury yourself in work and you move forward because that's what I'm, I'm feeling here. This is the work card, okay? Somebody who's slaving away, who, who's very, very immersed in, in their craft, really immersed in what they're doing. They love their job. They generate a, quite a bit of financial resources for themselves. And so this has been your coping mechanism, okay? Um, it's like suppressing the emotions, not feeling the feelings and channeling all that extra excess energy to other areas of your life where um, you can see tangible, visible results. Okay. That's when an Aquarius person has turned really cold. They have a tendency of doing that. And I feel like this might be the situation that's happening in your life right now where you're not focusing on the love part. You're not focusing on the relationships or you're not focusing on past disappointment and people that have disappointed you. You move on and you sever ties and you don't look back. And other people might perceive you as being very, very stone cold. But it is a coping mechanism. It has some. It, it, it's like a coping mechanism that you have re resorted to many, many, many times in your past. And in the process of doing that, I feel like the only danger is whenever we feel something, we really have to sit still with ourselves and to really figure out, you know, why is this making us so upset? Why is this such a big trigger for me? And Am I upset at this person, at this situation, or am I upset of dealing with the cumulative effects of all the previous situations that are similar to this? Because every time you feel something, you suppress it, you distract yourself with other things, you, you immerse yourself heavily in work. And I'm sensing that for the month of April, it's almost like I'm seeing this egg, okay? Somebody is like making an omelet or something. They crack open the egg and the guts spill out into this frying pan. And, you know, it, it bubbles up and then it's served for breakfast to somebody else. So that's what I'm, I'm feeling. It's almost like you're, you're, you have broken a cycle. You have been broken open. You're coming to the awareness that this situation triggered me so much and I wasn't able to make sense of it because I ran away from it or I never properly processed it. And so this month, it's all about giving something a name, like being able to pinpoint exactly, why am I so upset at this situation? Why does this person trigger me so much? Why does the, their behavior bother me so much? And you're realizing that it's not just this person, it's not just this connection, it's everything else that has happened in the past is everything else that has made me feel less than, made me feel abandoned. And I feel like you're finally able to own up to the fact that there was a situation here where somebody really hurt you um, a, a while ago, I feel, for many of you. Um, and it was a significant relationship. Think back to the most significant past relationship that you've had where, you know, it might have lasted six years. It might have lasted eight, uh, ten years. It might have been a situation where I feel something like three years ago, it harkens back to a situation that happened three years ago that you felt was very, very damaging. So whatever that is to you, Aquarius, I feel like now you're like, finally, I'm okay. You might have told yourself, you know, like two years ago or three years ago, I'm okay, I'm okay. But now emotionally you're releasing, you're purging 
it's already at the end of the cycle. It's not going to be making a comeback. It's not going to affect your self-esteem or your sense of self-worth or, or your sense of like uh, lovability moving forward into the future. Okay. Um, many of you are having a major breakthrough in a relationship right now. Okay. We have here the lovers. It's a really beautiful card and we have the empress. The Empress is basically knowing your worth, being able to be given a title by another person, okay? So this is somebody that is giving you a title. You have an official title in a situation. You're, I, I don't like saying this, you're wearing the pants in the relationship. You're ruling the relationship. You're the strong one in the relationship. You're in charge of your relationship. And there is this no-nonsense type of an approach to the way in which you run the relationship, okay? So I feel like, you, and you know, relationships are not supposed to be about power differentials, but I definitely feel like you're the one taking charge and actively maintaining your relationship and you're trying really hard as well to be a really, to, to demand like balance in your relationship, uh, reciprocity, and you know, the mutual exchange of energy in your relationship and you're not really tolerating anything less. And I feel like not only is this coming in in the relationship sector, this is also coming in in the friendship sector. The ones that have actively, you know, touched your bubble, okay? That, that, that sphere with the electricity running through it. The people that have actively reached out and touched you and touched your bubble and, and really tries to communicate and really tries to include you into the fold. You're giving them the reciprocity. You're making the gesture to reach out and you're definitely um, making the you're making the effort in order to hold the people that are close to you, really close to you, to protect the things that matter to you. She's holding this staff and this shield. So like she's about to, she's willing to go to war and fight for the people that she loves, the friends that she loves, defend their honor and defend her own. So I have a very no nonsense approach um, that you're taking in all areas of your relationships, even family as well. Um, there's also a lot of love and support coming through from family members, okay? So you have friendships that are really blossoming, relationships that are really thriving, family unit as well that are just um, bringing you a lot of emotional satisfaction, a lot of, um, I'm seeing like gentility, which is, um, it's a weird word. I never use that word. And I feel like when I say it, it denotes sort of like, um, a sense of like regality when it comes to our family and then also the gentle and delicate and respectful way in which they 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 give you love okay they praise you they they you know family members know all of our deepest darkest uh secrets right and they know us they they've seen us at our worst they've seen us at our best and I feel like there's this really beautiful energy coming through regarding family members and how much they really appreciate you. So you have a lot of love, a lot of support, and a lot of like praises coming through from other people. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with you softening up your energy, reaching out to other people. Um, let me talk about this first, and then I'll go back to this Queen of Swords. Okay, so we have a couple here. We have the Queen of Cups and the King of Cups. So both of these are court cards in the water suit and whenever two court cards, especially the queen and the king comes out, it indicates a relationship, okay? Keep in mind the cards are not gender specific, so either one of these could be you, okay? You, you don't have to identify with the gender of the card, either one of these people could be you. Um, there's one person who is a little bit more on the selfish end in this relationship, okay? And it's coming out as this, okay? This is somebody that is sort of like, um, I, I feel like the energy is apprehension, one foot out the door, somebody who's not 100% sure if they are able to reciprocate, okay? like. I'm not sure if I can love you the way that you need to be loved. I'm not sure if I can give you everything that you deserve. I'm not sure if I am good enough for you. And I'm not sure if I am at my 100% best yet 
to be able to be your equal match, okay? Whereas the other person, this is somebody who's like has made it, okay? They know what they want. They have their love right in front of them. And they're completely 100% committed and devoted. Whereas you have the other person who's a little bit more standoffish because they're not really, really sure how they feel about the situation and whether or not they're willing to commit 100%. So you have, you're, you're dealing with somebody that you feel is like your counterpart, your perfect match, your ideal match. Somebody that brings you a lot of emotional stability and emotional satisfaction and emotional like uplifting. And if the cards were placed like this, then it indicates, you know, he's looking at her, there's mutual reception. But when it falls out like this, it's almost like one person is a lot more sure that they want this, whereas the other person is not really sure. And it's not that they're not sure about, about how they feel about you. I feel like they're not sure of their own capabilities, whether or not they're able to give you what you 100% deserve, what you 100% want from them. And I feel like I'm not sure I can give you what I feel like you deserve. You deserve the world and I don't have the world to give you. You deserve, you know, to be like wine and dine in the finest restaurant. And I'm not sure if I have that to give you. You deserve to be decked out in, you know, like a, a big wedding dress with like 20 bridesmaids with like a, you know, um, a, 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 like a, a beautiful beachside wedding at a resort somewhere. And I'm not sure if I have the financial resources to give you that. So I feel like you're dealing with someone who is not sure of their capability. Um, I do see a shyness here with the person that you're dealing with. And keep in mind, this is, you know, water energy, okay? Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. This is somebody that really, really cares about you. Um, they really care about you. But they feel like they have hangups. They have shortcomings. They have things in their lives that are not running smoothly the way that things are going in your life. So they're constantly comparing their capabilities, um, their their station. They're, they're constantly comparing their life with your life. And they feel like they don't live up to... They don't live up... They're not living up yet to their potential. And they feel like you're the empress. So em emperors and the empress, they rule empires. The king only rules like a, a tiny little, you know, fiefdom or kingdom or whatever you call it. Okay. So it's like this trumps that. And so they, they feel almost like they don't have enough to give you. They can't love you the way that you deserve. And I, I, I'm sensing like, you know, yes, this is a, a personal hang up that's coming through from their end. But on the more, I guess like on the more pragmatic front, this is a person that feels like you deserve a lot more. And they, they, they're chastising themselves. Why can't I be the person to give that Aquarius person everything that they deserve. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody like that who is apprehensive because they're not able to give you everything that they feel you deserve. You might be dealing with a cancer here. Very strong. This is the chariot card. This is the card of cancer. We also have Gemini, the lovers. This is the card of Gemini. We also have um, this is um, Leo, Taurus, and Libra for me, okay, with the Empress, because she's very regal, she's very strong, and she's very, um, I almost want to say like a little bit territorial. So you might be dealing with those combinations of actors who are trying to move their life along. The Chariot is, a, is about like harnessing the shadow side of us and the more enlightened side of us to stop fighting with ourselves to 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 stop being indecisive to make a decision and move forward this is somebody whoever you're dealing with they're trying to make their life better they're trying to be your equal match they feel deficient and you know you love them anyway so it doesn't really matter right like you don't care about these external things but i feel like if somebody who's um if somebody is conflicted and they 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 they're not comfortable in their own skin or they feel like they don't have a lot to give or they don't have a lot to offer 
they can't bring the best of themselves to a relationship okay so i feel like they're trying to get things moving in their lives they're trying to sort out things that are happening around them and then as a result of it i just feel like there there are a lot of things that they need to sort out before they can be a good relationship partner so this is not to say this is a no-go or you know dump this person or you know don't um feed any more energy to this person but i feel like they have a lot of things they need to to sort out so i i guess the advice here is for you to kind of um pick your battle some of you might be cutting this person out we have here the queen of swords you have turned over a new leaf in your life, Aquarius, and this is your energy. Someone who's very like no nonsense, very serious minded. Um, I like the pink depicted in this picture because it does indicate warmth, uh, innocence. OK, like it, it indicates a tremendous amount of warmth and innocence. So you're you have that internally. You have that and you're allowing that to show. But there's this big ass sword in front of you where you're go you're you're not going to tolerate people's bs you're not going to put up with excuses you're seeing things very very clearly and i almost feel like the people that don't reciprocate or you know the the energies that you put into situations that just kind of stall with the hangman it's just like suspended things are not going anywhere things are not really moving and you're cognizant of this. You're no longer tolerant of it. You no longer want this. And so I feel for some of you, you might be cutting out a, um, a love relationship, somebody that you really, really care about. You could be dealing with another air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, and Libra. Um, a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, those are coming out the strongest. If it's not balance if there's stuck energy if things are not progressing and moving you don't really have the time of day to entertain it anymore and you're realizing that you know i'm whole i have a lot of good things going on for myself you know my work is going well i'm really intelligent which you guys are you guys are incredibly intelligent um i solve my own problems i'm self-sufficient i don't need anybody so if somebody makes me put my life on hold, it can be very aggravating to me. It can feel to you like on an intuitive level that if it's meant to be, why is it so hard? Why are there so many stalemates? Why are there so so why is there so much stalled energy? Why are things not progressing if it's really meant to be? And so I see you kind of like uh, moving situ moving away from situations that got you really stuck and i i also feel too you know laying down the law of the land is what i'm seeing with this giant sword where you're not tolerant of things anymore okay um what i'm feeling as well um the, on the work front things are are going really really well this is a card about success okay this is like a, a lot of struggle um, having to deal with a lot of struggle, overcoming the challenges, jumping over the hurdles, passing through that entire obstacle course successfully uh, to be able to achieve success, being very disciplined with yourself, being able to nail something is, is what I'm sensing. You've worked really, really hard, okay? Um, you've achieved a lot in your life. And then I also feel like the financial abundance is definitely coming. So we're, we're at the eight now and we have the potential to move forward until the, the very end stage, which is the 10 of pentacles, which is le like leaving a lasting legacy, creating, you know, money and, and generating money in a way where there's a lot to, it's like creating something that is physically tangible, having mo money in the bank account having money in your savings, not having to dip into your savings, like having a lot of financial abundance and trying to secure more financial abundance for yourself. So you're at a position where you're really happy and just content. And so 
you're not very tolerant about you know people not sh not um, about people wasting your time pretty much okay so what I have here is definitely there there is somebody that you have a really strong emotional bond with and you know for many of you this is somebody that you're going to get married to this is somebody that I feel like you have this deep sense of knowing but they're dealing with other things in their life they're trying to progress they're trying to move on they're trying to move forward and you know figure things out for themselves they're trying to find their destiny they're trying to like sort things out in their own lives and so they don't have the the the, the sense of knowing that you do and I feel for many of you you're like this is it this is the the person that I want to be with this is the person that I'm going to get married to um, and your intuition is really it's very accurate it's very on point and I, I just feel like you already know but there is a delay here the delay is happening so that they can sort things out for themselves so I feel like you either need to take this very very slowly you need them to sort through their own mess so that they can meet you where you are okay because if you're up here let's show it like this and they're down here they're gonna drag you down with them and you're not gonna have that because you've been through that Aquarius you you can't put yourself through that again and you have made a vow to yourself I'm, I'm, I'm only looking for balance at this point and so I feel like somebody is trying to get things someone is trying to unstuck themselves and believe it or not you are the catalyst that will allow them to 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 move on but they're they're not aware of that just yet okay so what do you do you can you can wait you can wait for them you can wait till they're ready you can bury yourself in your work you can accept other love offers that are on the table for you and then when they're ready they'll reach out when they they they've made that breakthrough in their life when they're no longer conflicted when they have already you know figured out what they need to do from their end that's when they'll come back and like i feel like it's not much consolation to tell you guys this but I'm, i keep seeing someone who's really really stuck and this is not your energy this is not you because you're coming in very strong this woman can easily use her sword and cut this man from this really uncomfortable situation right so I feel like you're dealing with someone you can easily help them but you can't really help people unless they want to be helped right some people are, are, are victims of their circumstance or their environment or they perceive themselves to be stuck in situations they might be too proud to ask for help they might be in a situation where they're like, oh, it's not that bad, you know. But if you maintain in this position for a sustained period of time, all the blood leaves your, you know, lower extremities, it rushes to your head, and it's not a really healthy place to be. But I feel like for this person, it's like, it's not that bad. I can bear with it for like another month, another year, another six months, another two years, um, possibly. So you want to help them. You want to come rushing in, you know, to help them, to tell them what they should do. But they're not really asking for help just yet. And it is not our place to infringe upon somebody else's free will. Okay? It's not our place. It's sort of like how, um, you know, like um, you would get really upset if somebody gave you unsolicited advice right like i feel like that's one of aquarius's uh, pet peeve if somebody tells you you should do this aquarius you should do that you get really upset and and a, a big part of it has to do with the fact that you're your own person and you feel like you know if someone tells you that they are undermining your ability to problem solve essentially they're undermining your your intelligence and so you don't welcome unsolicited advice and i feel like this person is the same way they are incredibly incredibly stubborn incredibly stubborn they will not ask for help until the situation hits like rock bottom and so 
you're in the perfect position to help them, but they're not asking for it just yet. You're seeing from the sidelines that they're really struggling and you're like, it could be so easy, but this person is not really choosing the easy route. And so we have to just kind of let people be and we can't really interfere with the, the whole, you know, self-development process of other people. We can't interfere. We can tell them we'll be there, but we can't really infringe upon, you know, their own free will. So I feel like there's a situation here, possibly a relationship partner who is too stubborn for their own good. And uh, they're trying to find themselves, give them the time, the space, and give them the support and the love that they need to kind of sort things out on their own, okay? You're in a really good situation right now, and I feel like, you know, there's still definitely um, a, a really good relationship some of you might be in, and I feel like that person is stubborn too, but they're, they're, they're working at it. You both are working at the relationship. You both are trying to move forward. You both care about each other. There's a lot of love here. So I feel like whatever situation that happened in the past, it definitely uh, was laid to rest in the past, okay? It was a situation where I feel like both parties were too young, you know? This is childhood innocence, puppy love. Like, what do you know about love as a kid? And two people got involved with each other at a such a young age that they didn't know how to handle the relationship properly so you can say like oh you know they did this and they can say you did this but ultimately i feel like the fault lies with both parties and you ended up really really hurt but what what happened was there was a lot of pressure and somebody buckled under the pressure and then it created like a almost like a, a domino effect and then the relationship sort of unraveled and it was a really significant relationship it's something that you will remember for the rest of your life moving forward and it almost like made you very jaded or or it it, it taints all the subsequent relationships that comes after it and as a result of it you don't feel like you can trust people you you feel like you have you know dealt with the emotional baggage and it's really affected your ability to to get into new relationships and to trust people again and to you know start brand new you have already put that behind and i feel like you know that that uncomfortable mercury cycle mercury retrograde cycle forced you to really confront these issues the trust issues the uh, uh, the abandonment issues the love slash hate that you had for this person you have already grieved and you know moved away and it doesn't really have an impact on you but now you have a choice moving forward do you still you know put your sword up or do you embrace new energies that are going to be coming in um you have i'm going to pull out three more cards for you just so that we can decide like aquarius what's the best thing for aquarius to do do they wait or do they move on ace of pentacles okay this is something that is tried and true it's very splendid it's a new energy you have to take care of it so it's kind of like a seed you put it in the ground you water it you nurture it you tend it you take care of it you watch over it day after day after day it requires maintenance so a relation like I feel like the advice is don't take things for granted if this is something that you want and I feel like many of you it's not so much about waiting but this is treating something in a very delicate manner uh, recognizing that this is a, a really big love the love of a lifetime and you have this sense of knowing this is somebody that I want to be with this is somebody I'm gonna get married to and they might not come to that awareness just yet and so the 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 Pentacles energy this is very slow moving the time has to be right so if you you plant the seed in the ground right and if you've god forbid choose to plant something in the dead of winter and you uh and you know the the snow covers it the snow falls down the 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 land is like permanent permafrost nothing is going to grow so timing i feel is everything it, it almost seems like there's snow in the ground but either way timing is of the utmost importance here so i feel like there's a situation it it the waiting is for your own good is for for both of your good okay so it, the, the waiting needs to happen 
because the timing is not just right just yet. So when the time is right, and I feel like, you know, May seems really right because that's when I, I think like the flowers blossom and the flowers come out. And I feel like, you know, when there's no more frost in the ground, when the barren landscape is no longer barren, when things start to sprout up, I feel like that's when this relationship will get off the ground, okay? Let me see what else. They're also saying as well, a relationship is kind of like a car. With this chariot card, this is like traveling by land. Some of you might be taking a trip. And so I'm like, the, the relationship is almost like a car. You have to bring it in for, you know, the whatever 3,000, 5,000 mile maintenance that you have to do on a regular basis. Aquarius, you've got a lot of options here. You already know this is tried and true, and this is like the one. You have a lot of options that are coming into the picture for you that you're fantasizing over or looking at, okay? And you have a lot of social engagement, a lot of, this is what I call like, you know, um, the, the three of cups is socializing, going on dates, um, traveling, meeting new people, mingling with a lot of people, having a really, really good time going out, dancing, singing, whatever it is, drinking. Um, you already know this is the one, but it's taking a long time. So you can, you know, distract yourself in the meantime with other things, with other social engagements. But deep down, you already know this is going to take a long time, but it is the right one. So I feel like give it space, let it breathe. You can take care of it, you know, uh, nurture it from afar, but let the other person sort out things from their own life before they can come back to you. Okay. But I have a person here that you have a really strong emotional connection with. This is somebody, um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and I also see an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And Gemini and <clears throat> Cancer comes out really, really strongly. This is somebody who's very um, emotionally, they're really nurturing, okay? Their, their energy is almost very feminine. Um, they, they take care of people. They take care of things. They nourish your soul. They say the right things in the right context. And I feel like they have a lot of love to give, but they don't feel like they can give you everything that you deserve. So it's not like they don't care about you. It's just, they need to make themselves a better person first. And that's what they're working on. And then I also have like a, a lot of chemistry, the lovers, really, really strong chemistry between two people. And this is like a, a card about complementarity. Okay, so like the, the masculine, feminine energy the yin and yang and so one person exhibits a lot of masculinity the other person is like the epitome of uh, femininity so altogether, the the energy exchange between them is really strong so there's really strong chemistry it has the potential to grow so i feel like this is not just a fling this is not just like a fly by night type of situation that will kind of um, fizzle out this is something that is very long lasting and you know you have this innate sense of knowing its potential and that's why you're going to wait around because you know this is real okay um, I'm gonna leave it at that I, I can't believe it's all very love focused but I feel like some of you might be taking a trip some of you are getting ahead really really strongly in your career making a lot of money I'm sensing just a, a big force to be reckoned with in your work environment, okay? Anything else that they need to know? And I'm sorry that this uh, reading is running so so uh, long. So I have here the Knight of Swords. And once again, it's almost like this. I'm seeing this, this kind of duel. You've got a lot. They're coming in. They're a very young energy, possibly a new person. And they see everything that you have and they're just not really sure if they can give you everything that you need and you know the the sword energies especially the knight the knight of swords is the fastest moving person in the deck okay so like it's somebody who's very swift who's very truthful who's very honest who's very blunt and so you're dealing with someone who's who, who's not just going to tell you what you want to hear they're 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 not a yes man 
they they will tell you what they think is is real they will tell you what they think is important but i also feel like there's definitely somebody who's very intimidated by everything that you have going on in your life and they don't feel like they can be a good relationship partner to you because they don't have enough to give you okay so i would just leave it at that aquarius i'm running out of breath um for those who are looking for spiritual guidance or if you want a reading for yourself, I've included a link in the description box for a psychic based out of California. Her name is Bridget. I highly recommend her. Um, I will be back in about two weeks time, okay, for your mid-month reading. Take care of yourself, Aquarius. I'm really happy to see this for you and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.